Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your fishing buddy back with another video for y'all and today He's dancing. I'm dancing. Today he's dancing. So today we want to talk to y'all about catching catfish. Just some basics. Okay? We talked to you about panfish. We talked to you about bass. And now we want to talk to you about catfish. If you're going after bigger catfish, you're going to need some bigger rods. But if you're going after eating size catfish, the rods that we've already shown you, they'll work just fine. And even catching bigger catfish, if you set that drag to where that, that fish can pull some line, you don't need 50 pound Charlene Big Game or 50 pound braid. You don't necessarily need that, but if you wanna make sure you're gonna get them in or you're not really sure how to set your drag just yet, bigger line will help out. It is gonna decrease your casting unless you're using braid, but for today's purposes, I'm gonna show y'all as if we're going after monsters, okay? We talk about some bigger tackle right now. So pretty much whatever you hook into, you're gonna be able to get that into the bank. How I like to do it is, I like to use thicker line on my main line, and I like to use thinner line on my leader. And the reason why is because if I get hung up and I gotta break off, I gotta pull that to break off, I'd rather break off my leader and lose my hook than lose my whole rig. But with that being said, I like to tie my sinker on the lightest line because normally when I get hung up, I get hung up on my sinker. So that's the thing that's then got up under a rock or whatever's down there in the water and then it got me hung up. So I'm gonna show y'all my little simple trick that I like to use, nothing special, but it's gonna help you out a whole lot. Let's say I'm fishing with 50 pound line. I'm gonna make my leader 40 pounds, but 30 pounds. Let's just imagine that this line right here is coming off of our rod. I'm gonna take a swivel and I'm gonna connect it to my line. You're gonna need a weight of some sort. You can use this style of weight. You can use a no roll, or you could use like a, a teardrop weight. If you're fishing in current, and that current is pretty strong, you're probably gonna need at least a three ounce. If you put a four ounce on there, then it's probably gonna stay where you put it. A two ounce probably won't do it in current, but in a lake, still water, a two ounce should be just fine. You should be able to get out to where you're trying to get, no problems, especially if you're using braid instead of monofilament. But for the best casting distance, at least a three ounce is definitely gonna get you where you wanna be. So a lot of people, We'll just do a simple Carolina rig, and that's fine. But if you get hung up, you're gonna lose that whole rig. And what a Carolina rig consists of is your weight, whatever style you decide to use, your weight, a bead, okay? A bead and a a swivel and on that swivel go ahead and tie a palomar knot so how you do that is fold that line in half like so you put both of those ends you put that loop in your swivel you put those two ends in your left hand you make a loop Right, and then you take though that loop that you made with the two ends, see? You make that loop and you go in the loop that you just made. And before you cinch it tight, that opening right there or that loop that you just made or that loop that you just put through the loop, you bring your swivel through there, right? 
And now hold that swivel up at the top like that. You moisten it. Uh -uh. And the reason why you moisten it is so it'll slide easier and you don't burn your line up. Take that and you cinch that tight. And that right there is probably the strongest knot that you're gonna tie, right? Take and you cut that tag in, okay? And now this is what you have, right? The purpose of this bead is to protect that knot from this lead smacking up against it over and over and over, okay? Now we're gonna take about a foot or 18 inches of a leader, leader material. You can use a stronger, even like a, what do they make those out of? Like a, a steel leader. They make steel leaders that you can just buy and connect. But I told you what I like to do. Cause if this right here is on here and the only thing that's on here is a hook, then I'd rather just lose the hook than my swivel, my bead, my sinker and everything, right? I don't want to lose everything. I just want to lose, I don't want to lose nothing. Be real with you. And these are, I like Eagle Claw hooks. I always have, I always use Eagle Claw hooks. And these are a Circle C, Mar Circular, Six Out. Like I said, Eagle Claw, Laser Sharp. I like uh, Eagle Claw hooks. So the knot that I like to tie, a snail knot, like a, a no knot, snail knot. And we're gonna run that through the top of the hook, right? Bring it down about an inch. Run that through the top of the hook, okay? And then we're gonna take the rest of the leader, that 12 to 18 inches, and we're just gonna wrap it about seven times. Something like that, wrap it. Then we're gonna take the, the top of that 12 to 18 inches and we're going through the bottom to the top this time. So we started off, we went through the top, we left that about an inch, we wrapped it about seven times and then we brought it back up through the bottom, right? And what that's gonna do is, whenever it goes in that fish's mouth, like we're not gonna have to set this hook, okay? We're not gonna have to set it. All you're gonna have to do is reel down on it. And nine times out of 10, when that fish pulls, wherever it's at in the mouth, it's gonna turn and it's gonna catch something. It's gonna catch on to something. You see that? Nine times out of 10. So now that we got that, and don't worry about it not being a knot or whatever, like this hook ain't going nowhere. I can assure you this hook ain't going nowhere. It's on there. All right, so now that we got that taken care of, we want about 12 to 18 inches. Uh, we just leave that on there. And then we're gonna come up on this swivel and we're gonna tie improved clinch knot, okay? So what we have here is we got our tag in and we got the rest of the leader, right? Give ourselves some room to play with. We're gonna make a loop. We're gonna pinch that with our thumb and our pointer finger. And you see that line coming off? We're gonna take that and we're gonna wrap it seven times. Three, four, five, six, seven, right? Wrap that seven times. And that loop that we left down at the bottom, we're gonna run that tag in through that loop, right? And the loop that we have right here, we're gonna run it back through there. Then we're just gonna moisten. Bada mm -mm 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 -mm. bam. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this knot all the way down to that swivel, boom, slide it down. And once it's down, we'll go ahead and pull this one tight, pull this one back up, 
slide it down. Make sure it cinch down good. Make sure it cinch down really good. Okay, cinch down. Boom. Everything is tight. Everything is tight. Then we're gonna take that and cut that tag off. It don't have to be pretty. We catfishing. Ain't nothing pretty about it. So now this is what we have, right? A Carolina rig. And that's all you need, right? But let's say you don't want this to be on the bottom, right? You can take this right here and turn this into a Santee rig, a Santee Cooper rig, right? So all you're gonna need for that is a float. You're just gonna need a float, a bobber. You can use this kind, salute. But this kind right here, this one, this actual one, is not big enough, okay? So if you're gonna use one of these, you're gonna need something that's gonna be big enough to hold your bait up off of the bottom. So you want something kind of big. You can use one of these, but you need a big one that's gonna hold your bait up. The bait I like to use, I use, uh, I go to boat docks and I throw a cast net and I catch shad or I go to the dam out of Old Hickory Dam out here in Tennessee. I fish for skipjack, I catch them, use cut bait. I've used uh, chicken livers for catfish. I've used bluegill for catfish. I've used chicken breasts for catfish and I've used night crawlers for catfish. Okay, that's your bait. Now you're gonna take this, your line down here at the bottom, and you don't wanna have too much because when you cast out, this right here can get tangled all up in the top of your line and you won't even know. Like it'll be sitting down there, you wondering why you ain't getting no bites and then when you reel it in, you got your bait tangled up all up on top of your, your float like that. So you just want this to be like, you don't want your bait to be no more than really this far from the bottom. Boom, you put that on there pretty close to your bait so it don't have room to get tangled up. No room at all to get tangled up. You put your pegs back in there like so. You put your bait on there and boom, you just turn that Carolina rig into a South Carolina rig, a Santee Cooper rig. Now it's gonna, your weight is gonna hit the bottom and this bait is gonna float up like this and it's gonna have a nice little presentation. So when that catfish is flop, floating around at the bottom, I think catfish got like overbites, underbites or something. That's gonna be a much more natural type presentation for Especially if you got like a rocky bottom or something down there, your bait can fall down in between them rocks. And uh, not only will that get you hung up, but that fish, that catfish ain't gonna be able to slurp it up. The other way that I was saying is just a little simple trick that you can use to where if you keep getting caught up, you keep breaking off, you could do something simple like this right here. Take an even smaller test line, right? Look at there. There's no weight, there's no bead on there, right? It's just the main line on a swivel attached to the leader, attached to the hook, right? That snail knot. They make swivels that's got three of these heads on there, but it don't matter. Take a smaller test line, right? And attach it. Now take your weight and attach it. Now, what you have is the same thing. Uh, another thing you can do is, you can take a paper clip and put it on there. I don't have a paper clip. You can take a paper clip, hook it on there, open that paper clip and uh, hook it back through there. That way, with this 50, uh, pound main line and it's 30 pound leader 
you get to pull and you get snagged on something, that paper clip will just open up and release. So you don't have to use this string. You can just use a paper clip, put the paper clip on there, open it up, put it through the, the head of your weight, fasten it back. You get hung up, that paper clip will just open up because it's softer, it's weaker. And then that, lay, that, that lead will break free and boom, there you go. So you got the same thing minus the bead and this right here gets hung up and it gets to pulling, pulling, pulling. This right here is gonna snap, it's gonna break. And you can do the same thing. If you want to, you can fish it like this, basically like a Carolina rig, right? Minus the bead. Or you can go back to the Santee Cooper, put that back in there, put that back in there and boom. If you anything like me, I like to walk around and do other type of fishing while I'm catfishing. I don't like to just sit down and wait on the fish to bite. So if you're doing other stuff while you're fishing, you can get these little things like this from Walmart or off of uh, Amazon. I like these because they're easy to get off. You get a fish on there, you can just reach up and clip that off real quick after you reel down on that fish and make sure like don't set the hook with these circle hooks they're made for pretty much the fish to hook itself so you just want to reel down on that slack make sure the rod tip is bending down pick it up and just kind of come back with it as you reel keeping the tension on that fish and that hook is going to drive itself through that lip so get out there cast out put your bait out present it to them and hook them up. Let me know in the comments how it's going for you. You know what I'm saying? As always, I hope this video is informative. If you thought so, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, a thumbs up, a salute, or something like that. I appreciate you being here fishing with Sid. And until next time, good luck out there.